Fireflies is a newer flashlight brand to the market that's bringing multiple emitter option lights with secondary LEDs at an affordable price. Today I'm taking a look at the E07, a 7 LED light with secondary emitters and it's running Toykeeper's Android firmware. Thanks to Banggood for sending this to me to take a look at and review. Banggood has provided a discount for this light. If you're interested in it, make sure you check the description for a link to that. Just a quick reminder to make sure you're following me on social media. I have accounts on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and Patreon. Your support and follows are greatly appreciated. Here is the packaging the light comes in. It's just a brown or a black cardboard box here. On the end here, you get a little sticker that shows the models, the LEDs, when it was assembled and manufactured, all that stuff. Uh, Banggood puts their sticker here on the bottom. Just a plain box, basically. Inside, the uh, light sits in this foam uh, enclosure with a little bit of foam on top, nicely protected. And you get a few extras. You get a uh, lanyard here, and this connects to the flashlight here at the back on the head. You get two extra O-rings. You get this uh, adapter tube with this uh, brass uh, contact. And what this does is this allows you to run 18650 batteries in the light. It's nice they include that. And then you get a really nice manual here. And um, I'll take a minute to talk about that. The Andrel firmware here, and I'll put in a bit, of, bit better picture, is kind of complicated. Um, it's got a lot of options to configure and um, change things. Once you get used to it, it's not hard, but take this uh, take a picture of it on your phone, kind of keep it when you're using the light. You'll want to refer back to it till you kind of memorize it and learn it. But they just have a few basic facts here on the other side. But then this other side is kind of a cheat sheet. It allows you to, what it does is it tells you if you want to say, um, change your, go to party mode or something like that, tells you how to do that. Or go to lightning uh, or storm mode or lockout, momentary, all those types of things. It's a cheat sheet, so if you don't understand the uh, graphical UI, you can use the cheat sheet. It's a nice uh, addition. So this light comes with uh, four colors of bodies. Banggood's currently carrying three of them, a matte black, a desert uh, yellow, which is more of a yellow tan, and a gun gray, which is what I've got here. Branding on the light's pretty minimal. You've got a heat warning at the top, EO7, fireflies, and then on the tail cap here, you've got some additional um, branding that's kind of required to be there that a lot of lights have on it. The tail cap is flat and allows the light to tail stand excellently. It's got a few flats on here to provide grip to untwist, and it twists really easily. Uh, threads on this are really, really shallow, shallow and square cut. You can see there's a nice short but stout spring in there. Makes good contact. You can see uh, the clip on here it only fits one way, it's directional on the light. It's kind of a short stubby clip. Um, it does not allow for deep carry, which is something that I'd prefer, but you know, it's not too bad either for kind of shorter light. The body tube here is kind of this milled frag design. It's not really sharp or anything like that, but yet at the same time provides a good amount of grip in the hand. Threads on the head side here are very fine. They are pretty much dry and acme cut. If we look at the internals of the head, we get another short spring. Um, this time it has a little bit of glob of solder in there to improve contact. The head itself here is pretty small and it grows in diameter just a little bit to accommodate those seven LEDs that uh, are at the top here. On the outside, you've got some heat sinking here. This helps improve heat dissipation because this light gets really hot. You've got the button here. It's an electronic switch with a little uh, ring around it. You've got four LEDs inside and the LEDs inside are the same color as the secondary emitters inside the main bezel. And if you can't tell here because of my video lights, mine are kind of a purple. The, uh, you've got a piece of anti-reflective coated glass here and an O-ring, and the stainless steel bezel easily twists off. Um, the O-ring comes out, the lens and optic comes out, and then you can see um, the inner workings of the light. The circuit board in the head of this light is a bit non-traditional. The emitters and secondary are actually on separate boards and they're stacked on top of each other with wires in the middle to connect. You've got three pots there and they allow you to change the intensity of the secondary. Um, these look like just normal like Phillips screws, but I couldn't find any of my screwdrivers that I felt comfortable fitting in there. 
so you might have a little bit of hard time adjusting. Overall, build quality on this light is pretty good for the money. I measured the overall length on this light at 114 millimeters, maximum diameter at the head at 37 millimeters, and minimum diameter at the center of the body section at 25 millimeters. Weight with the Sulfurin 21700 battery is 187.6 grams. I compared this light to the MSR D4 because it's a pretty common multi-emitter light that a lot of people have. And even though it runs an 18650, the EOS 7 uses a 21700 battery. The D4 is shorter, obviously, and uh, smaller in diameter in the head, as you can see. But the body tubes are pretty similar. Um, and they fit pretty similar in the head, both have e-switches, and they both run uh, firmware by Toy Keeper, and in my instances are using Nisha LEDs. So, kind of similar comparisons in my night shot, I compare the two as well. So my light's using seven Nisha 219B R9080 LEDs for their primary emitter, and this is one of my favorites, if not my absolute favorite, because it has 98 CRI, but also because it produces a good amount of red, meaning colors are more realistic. This is just about the best Nisha LED you can buy. The downside is that Nisha LEDs aren't the most efficient on the market. Uh, this model produces the least amount of heat of the EO7 series. Um, the SSC20 that they put in has 4,500 lumens or the XPL highs a whopping 6,900 lumens. So if you want more lumens, you go with the XPL highs. Um, you won't get as high as CRI. You won't get quite as neutral or um, warm as the niche is here. And it's really nice, you have six emitter options between tint and uh, LED, and then four colors. Um, in addition to what Banggood offers, uh, if you go through Firefly's website, they offer a clear, unanodized version. That also said uh, the Nisha 209Bs are the most sensitive to be being overdriven, and this is a FET light, so your choice of battery is important. On my light, as I mentioned before, the secondary emitters are purple. Other colors that Firefly sells are red and blue. And the secondaries do uh, shut off when low voltage protection kicks in, but the LEDs on the button here don't. They're directly wired to the battery. Uh, low voltage protection kicks in at 2.935 volts. For this reason, if you're not gonna use this light for a, a long time, it'd be best if you just mechanically lock it out. Really easy to do, just give that tail turn just ever so slight turn, or uh, take the battery out. Heat is a big thing on this light. It's small and compact, has a lot of LEDs, and gets really hot. The fact that I have the niche emitters on this light doesn't help at all. Um, on turbo, the light heats up super quick. In under two minutes, I would see temperatures of 61C um, in this section here, especially kind of back, back below here. That's 142 Fahrenheit, and uh, that's a little bit problematic because to shut the light off, I like to hold it where I have a little bit of a finger underneath here to push the button, and that's approaching an uncomfortable temperature to hold. This light does do a good job of spreading that heat out, um, so it starts to build down the body and into the tail cap. I noticed heat in the tail cap on this light more or faster than I would on most traditional flashlights. Luckily, uh, you can adjust the thermals in the UI on this light and make it so it uh, is a little bit more aggressive on step down if you wish. Runtime on uh, my Firefly's EO7 is 100% temperature dependent. I don't do a lot of cooled runtimes because if you're using it in your hand out on a hike or walk or around your house or whatever, you're probably not gonna have a wind or a fan blowing on it constantly. So I kinda like to just see what it's like just sitting there. And turbo itself is good for about less than a minute before it starts to step down via heat. And my graphs here, you can see that it goes up between about 25 and 50% relative output as it adjusts for heat over that 50 minute uh, main runtime, and then just steps down right after 100 minutes. At this point, the light goes into its uh, lowest mode for the remaining 150 minutes. And as I said before, low voltage protection kicks in at 2.935 volts. Okay, tonight I've got my outdoor shots for the Fireflies EO7. My light is running the Nisha 219B LEDs, and the yards are the R9080 variant. And you can see here, here are the four uh, LEDs on the switch, and then these are the secondaries. Excuse the focus here, I've got it set for long distance. These are kind of really just for locating the light, showing the light, not for distance. But if I turn it on here, these seven LEDs really do run really low and then I can hold down and start to ramp up and this is where it starts throwing its distance here 
Um, this is running the Andrel UI, great UI, really bright. Um, turbo is 3,500 lumens. This is the top of high. If I double click, I get turbo. This is the full 3,500 lumens. Uh, this light is capable of more if you get different LEDs, but these niches are one of the lower output models. But you trade that for a fantastic 98 high CRI. Um, you can see it's a great big flood beam, does a great job of flooding that tree. And you know, for as much flood this is, it throws um, to those trees there pretty dang well. But just this being um, on in my hand, the head is, is too hot to hold. I'm holding it by the, the tube of it here, kind of like this. You can barely see here just off the reflection. And up here is just way too hot to hold. So I want to do a little comparison. I've got my MSR D4 here that I'm showing on the right. Um, if I punch that up to turbo, there we go. But you can see it's a nice, a pretty nice beam as well. Um, kind of pretty well neutral white. It doesn't throw as well. Um, and, but you can see kind of the flood on the tree there, pretty nice beam. And here I've got the Firefly's light. There is turbo again. It throws further, nicer beam. So here's the MSR, just it's stepping down for heat. And then here is the Firefly's. Fairly comparable Nisha emitters. If I come down here, you can tell that the MSR or the uh, Fireflies here lights just a little bit warmer, a little bit nicer overall. So as I mentioned before, battery choice is pretty important on this light. I'm using some Sofren 21700 batteries that Banggood sent out with this light. Being a FET light, uh, you usually want a high drain cell, but in this application, kind of a medium drain cell is good, especially for these Nisha LEDs. This is about a 10 amp uh, battery, and that's a good fit. Sofrens here are listed at 4,000 milliamp hours, and I measured the uh, capacity uh, with my XSTAR VC4S that I reviewed a couple weeks ago and got uh, 3868 milliamp hours and 3861 between the two batteries that were sent out. So that 4000 number is pretty accurate. So as I mentioned before, this light is using Toy Keeper's Andrel UI. It's currently one of my favorites available and has a ton of options and neat Easter eggs that commercial UIs from your really big manufacturers, your Olights, your Phoenix, your Nikors, people like that just don't have. If you don't know, uh, Toy Keeper's really active on the flashlight forums, over on Reddit some as well, and she makes a lot of awesome um, firmware for flashlights. Your MSR D4, your uh, Lumentop FW3A, they're all running uh, Toy Keeper firmwares and uh, many more. By default, this light comes in a uh, ramping UI, so you just press on, this is uh, low, and you turn and press, and there is the highest mode. Double click to go to turbo, and uh, click once again to go off, but uh, if you just press again, it'll go down to low. So this light does come on at a very low range, uh, which is nice. LEDs are even on this one, no problems with uh, different voltages or anything. Uh, there is a stepped mode available if you'd like in the UI that you can configure. And like I said, the light has thermal controls that you can change, as well as five types of strobe, including a candle mode, a party mode, a lightning storm mode. Some of them aren't super practical, but it's just fun that your flashlight can do all these things. Uh, thunderstorm mode is actually really cool. One of the neat things this UI also has a sunset mode, which allows you to run the light in a very low mode and slowly fading out. I believe over a 30 minute time, then the light shuts off. Uh, I could see using this in a bedroom or something like that at night. Now I'm not gonna go through the UI and how to configure everything in detail because that would make this a really, really long video. But if that's something you'd be interested in seeing, make sure you leave a comment below. And if it's something I can fit in my schedule, I'll consider doing so because this is a really great UI. So for me, the pros are this is a big lumen flood with great emitter choices. I like that always on secondary and it can be toggled off if you don't. And that secondary is adjustable internally on the light. You've got three body colors from Banggood and six emitter options and Fireflies offers a couple more. So with that combination, there'll be something for everyone to fit this light. A lot of people say, I don't wanna buy this light because it only comes in cool white or something like that. That's not the case here. There's something for everyone. I like that this uses a 21700 battery. It provides a little bit more runtime and a nice size for the head. This could be EDCable in a front pocket. It's not something I'm probably gonna use that way, but it uh, definitely is able to. And they seems like they fixed early quality control issues that they had 
I've ran this light quite a bit here as I've had it for a little while and I've had absolutely zero quality control issues. A couple cons are, like I said, early models had some quality control issues. Mine has not had that at all. And heat. Um, this is a compact light. It's got a lot of LEDs. They get very bright. Heat's going to happen regardless of the light. It's just something that happens. So be careful with this. Um, keep it away from probably kids and uh, be careful using it yourself. This isn't something you'd want to turn on high and leave on forever. Just be conscious of that. My conclusion is that the Firefly's EO7 packs a ton of features for well under $100. I love that it has so many emitter options as well as body color options. It allows you to really find the perfect combination for you. More flashlights need to offer these. I know it makes production a little more hard and stocking at stores hard, but it really uh, is great. It makes it an enthusiast light, in my opinion, with all those options. While I love the 98 CRI of the Nisha 219B emitters in my light, um, if you want one that choose that is brighter than mine, um, you can almost double the lumen count uh, depending upon the LEDs that you choose. The biggest downside to this light is probably the heat. As I mentioned before, it's small form factor, a lot of LEDs, you're going to get heat. I do like that they went with that 21700 battery over the 18650, but give you the adapter so that if you want to run the 18650, you can. Overall, this is a high value light that I recommend for the Flashaholic. If you don't have one of these, kind of like the MSR D4s, your collection probably needs one. Banggood has provided a coupon that allows you to get the Fireflies E07 at a little bit better price, and I'll have details for that in the comments and description below. Make sure you give that link a click, as it does help me uh, continue to bring reviews like this to you. As always, I thank you for watching this video. If you're not subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate you doing so. Make sure you like the video and share it with anyone who you think might be interested in it. As always, I'll see you on the next gear review soon.